Windows 10 will be hitting end of life in October of 2025. Microsoft is heavily investing into this whole recall and co-pilot thing. And of course, there is the telemetry and the advertisements. And I know nothing is going to change, but maybe, just maybe, some people are actually going to give Linux a shot. And if that happens, there are a lot of videos on what to do as soon as you switch. What distro should you go with? Some of the first things you should go and learn and things like that. But what about just after that? What about once you've gotten your feet wet with something like Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, Pop OS, or any of these other distros people often recommend, and you want to do something new? Well, this is the video for you. The very first thing is a non-Windows-like desktop. On Windows, you get one desktop and one desktop alone. There are some minor things you can do. I know there are some fancy auto hotkey scripts and some Windows power users can do some weird fancy things that just probably shouldn't be happening. But realistically, going from one Windows system to another, they're gonna feel basically the same. And when you switch to Linux, it can be very tempting to use something that sort of approximates that Windows-like desktop experience. Things like Cinnamon on Mint, KDE, and to some extent, desktops like Budgie. But Linux has so much more out there, you don't have to limit yourself to just this one kind of experience. If that is what you like, keep doing that, you do you. But there's so much more out there to explore. For example, maybe you start on something like Ubuntu or Fedora, and now you've tried out GNOME. I mean this in the nicest way possible. GNOME is a more macOS-like experience where the UX design is a lot more cohesive and feels a lot more polished. But at the same time, you have a lot less in the way of knobs to turn and preferences to tweak, but what does exist generally is fairly meaningful. But even with GNOME, the way it handles application windows is still pretty much the same as Windows does so. But you can also try out a tiling window manager. Things like Awesome WM, Sway, Hyperland, where you don't have full control over the window placement. Windows are automatically placed into a layout based on a specific tiling algorithm. There are scrolling window managers like Niri. Endless WM or the Paper WM extension for GNOME, where windows are still placed into a layout based on some algorithm, but you don't just have your desktop, you can scroll infinitely to the left or right. There are tried and true desktops which might not offer the latest of latest features, but are absolutely rock solid. Things like XSCE and Cinnamon fits this category as well. And then there are standalone floating window managers like Openbox, which offer a windowing experience that you're used to from Windows, but doesn't offer all of that additional GUI tooling around it. It is simply just the windowing system, and you can go and find all your own applications by yourself. And again, maybe you look at all of these and say, they all suck. I don't know why anybody would ever do any of that. The one good thing that Windows has is the way it handles Windows. That's fine. But take this chance to at least discover what you do and don't like. On that note, living in the terminal. There has been a lot of work put into basically every major desktop to make them more user friendly, to give you GUIs to do most of the work you want to do. But what you'll realize very quickly using Linux is there is a lot of people out there who still decide to do as much as possible in a terminal. And your first question is probably going to be, why? Like, we have these GUIs, you're used to using them, so like, why don't these people use the GUIs as well? And that's a very good question, and the answer is very much going to depend on the individual user. So what I would recommend is if time permits, and this is going to be awkward, it's going to feel weird, things are going to feel like they don't work properly, try for a brief period of time to do everything that you can possibly do from a terminal-based application. Whether it's a TUI, a terminal user interface, or directly with a command line interface instead. If you start digging around looking for applications to do these tasks, you'll realize very quickly that there is a lot of applications out there that you have no idea why anybody ever made and why anybody would ever want to do that from a terminal. And you'll probably end up realizing that 
GUIs are just a better option for certain kinds of workflows, for certain kinds of applications. But if you're anything like me, you might decide that some parts of your system just make more sense to be done from a terminal. Things like a terminal-based text editor when you're modifying your config files. Maybe a terminal-based file manager if you're dealing with things that aren't images. Maybe things like your system monitor and you'll use something like BTOP. Or maybe just your package manager. You don't really feel the need to use a graphical front-end for installing applications. Running commands just does the job fine. And I could sit here and tell you the merits of doing all of these things from a terminal, but until you go and experience it for yourself, it's really going to be hard to attach to what I'm saying. Even if you decide that you do not like this experience, all of these applications just make more sense to be done from a GUI, hopefully now you have some perspective on why so many people out there still have this workflow and why so much of this tooling is still being developed today along with new tooling being made, but also doing the exact opposite. Avoiding the terminal as much as is physically possible, doing everything you can possibly do from a graphical application. Most people accept that Linux in its current state, there's just some things that you can't avoid the terminal for. Try to do so. Try to find a graphical application to do every little thing that you possibly could want to do. There are going to be things where there just simply isn't a GUI available. There's also going to be things where there is a GUI available, but maybe that GUI isn't in the best of states. Obviously, there are the more mainstream tasks like opening up a zip archive, which is just fine with a GUI doing web browsing, doing text editing, doing most of the things that you would do on Windows, that's going to be fine from a graphical application. But those weird edge cases, it's going to be weird. And it, once again, going to be awkward and going to be tough. And some things are just going to take a lot longer than they probably should. This is not going to be a pleasant experience. But... The reason why I'm suggesting doing both of these things is it gives you an understanding of two things. Firstly, what is missing in terms of GUI functionality or what GUIs are just missing entirely. A lot of people don't actually know what is and is not missing because they have a workflow that works from a terminal and haven't even bothered to look to see if there's a GUI replacement. Also, it helps you decide what you prefer to be a GUI and not to be a GUI, because on Windows, it's just assumed that everything is just going to be done from a graphical application, but you don't have to do that anymore. Yes, there are terminal choices on Windows, but that ecosystem is far, far less developed than it is on Linux. So now that you're here, try these things out and try to find where in the middle ground it works for you, but also doing the exact opposite, avoiding the terminal as much as possible and doing every little thing possible from a GUI. Another thing is don't just fall back to web applications you're used to, actually try something made for Linux. If there is tooling that you absolutely need for work or school, obviously that can't be helped. But otherwise, even though a lot of companies like Google or Microsoft do offer online suites that you can just use from your web browser, I would say, at least initially, avoid using them. There are open source alternatives that basically do all of the things that most people are going to want. So perhaps try these out before instantly going back to what you know. In some cases, the tooling is going to feel a lot more limited. Like, LibreOffice is really good, but it's not Microsoft Office, right? Like, there is a clear difference in what is supported. But if you're not using a lot of the features that were present in the Microsoft suite anyway, maybe LibreOffice is going to do everything you need. But you're only going to know this by actually trying it out. And if you're an artist, for example, there are tools out there like Critter, which some people will argue is as good or better than some of the alternatives available over on the Windows side. Something you absolutely don't get on the Windows side 
is different distro release models. For most people, your first Linux distro is going to be something like Ubuntu, maybe Mint, maybe Fedora, or something similar in this range. These are what are known as stable or point release binary based distros, as in they release new versions and then you upgrade to the new version like you would upgrade from Windows 7 up to Windows 8, Windows 8 up to Windows 10, 10 to 11, so on and so forth. And then all of the applications you install, they are already compiled for you and you just install them as a little package. But that is not the way that everything out there works. You've probably heard of something like Arch Linux. Arch Linux is very, very different from a point release distro. It is still binary based as in the application is already compiled for you, but Arch Linux doesn't have release versions. If you installed Arch five years ago or you installed Arch yesterday, these are still the same version of Arch because when updates come out, you just install updates onto that system and you just keep doing that until the end of time, until Arch stops being developed, you're still using the same version of Arch. You are rolling into the new releases. There's also this weird model which I often like to call a semi-rolling release where it still has clear new versions that you upgrade to, but certain core parts of the system are rolling out new updates as those updates come out. It's not going to be as quick as something like Arch, but generally it's pretty fast. It's definitely going to be faster than an actual point release. This would be things like PopOS, for example. In the case of PopOS, a big reason for this is the gaming context, because you generally want to have up-to-date drivers, whether it's because you're buying a new GPU or because the new drivers have optimizations for whatever games you're trying to play. There is also another kind of rolling release. I mentioned that Arch is a rolling release that is binary based. What about something that is source based where you have to compile every single application yourself? This is something like Gentoo. You have complete control over how the applications get compiled, what compile options you want to set, whether you want to go and modify the code before you even compile the application. This is not something that is going to be suitable for most people, but the option is certainly there. There is also this newly developing model called an immutable distro. Things like Silverblue, Aeon, Kalpa, and I don't know how I can explain what an immutable distro is in a couple of seconds. That deserves a whole video unto itself. Basically, in short, instead of you updating individual applications, it works more like Android, where when a system update comes in, the entire system is updated as one big block. I've personally found my home on Arch Linux, a rolling release binary based distro. But no matter what anybody's going to try to say to you, there is no one size fits all for every single user. If you have a slow internet connection or you're worried about bad updates, maybe what I'm using just is not suitable for you. But like with everything else I said, you won't know what works for you unless you actually give it a try. So if time permits, try out some things, see what's out there in the Linux world. So what do you think? Even if you are an experienced Linux user, maybe try out some of these things for yourself. If you've been using the same thing the entire time, maybe there is something out there that works better for you, but you just don't really know about it. Give it a shot, see how it goes. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribe to the pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and enjoy trying things out. Just have some fun with Linux.